Hey everybody, it is Zach here from the Ed Boys, and welcome to my Hydra guy. The Alchemical Hydra is the Slayer boss with the highest Slayer requirement. It's hands down one of the best money makers in the game when you get a chance to fight it. You can use either range or melee to fight the Hydra. For the most part, I'll be focusing on range methods, but I will discuss how to kill the Hydra with melee too for anybody who wants to learn that method. If you have been enjoying the content, be sure to follow me on Twitch. The link should be on the screen and in the description. In this guide, I will start with recommendations and requirements for fighting the Hydra boss. Next, I'll go over the gear and inventory setups, followed by how to get to the boss. I'll then discuss the mechanics of the boss before going over a typical trip. Finally, we get into the best part, the loop. To start the requirements and recommended stats, you do need 95 Slayer and a Hydra task to fight the Alchemical Hydra. The only Slayer Master that can assign you Hydras is Konar, who lives on Mount Kaurum, located in Zaya. Konar has her pros and cons, but this guide isn't necessarily about her, it's just about fighting the Hydra. The Hydra is very high level and has a lot of health, so solid stats are going to make a big difference in your kill times. I suggest 85 plus range or melee depending on your weapon, but going for 90 plus is recommended if you're planning on grinding a lot of kills. And if you're already 95 Slayer, I imagine that your stats are pretty high in general, to be fair. You can manage kills in the Hydra with pretty low stats since you can avoid the majority of the hits with prayer, but it will be a bit of a slow grind if your stats are lower. You do need protect from magic and range, so you need 40 prayer, but having Eagle Eye or even Rigor does make a huge difference. Plus, if you've made it to 95 Slayer and you don't even have 40 prayer, I'm not gonna lie, that is a strange build. When fighting the Alchemical Hydra, you are far enough into the dungeon that you're gonna need to wear some specific boots, which we go over in the gear section, but if you've completed the Elite Core and Diaries, you do not need to wear these boots, which is pretty convenient, though not 100% needed. Having the Hard Diaries does give you Arata's Blessing 3, which gives you three teleports to the mountain each day. The bank is upstairs, so you don't need to teleport every single time. You could potentially just teleport to the mountain and then always run back and forth from that bank, but if you get the Elites done, then you get unlimited teleports, which is far more convenient. You can use it to teleport out of the cave, no problem. Everything else is basically gear related, so we can move on to that. Let's go over what gear options you've got for fighting the Hydra. I'll start with range setup, and then I'll quickly go over the melee setup too. As you start fighting the Hydra, your prayer bonus isn't quite as important since you'll likely be taking more damage, which will be shortening your trips either way. As you find yourself not using as much food, you want to start using gear that gives a prayer bonus since that's going to determine your trip length for the most part. And Hydra is pretty weak to range in general, so you can still hit pretty well with your prayer gear, especially if you have a high range level. On this visual, it is pretty much a range heavy setup, but I will be going over all the replacement options, including possible prayer bonus upgrades. For your helmet slot, you should obviously have the imbued Slayer helm, especially by 95 Slayer. It's by far the best in slot helmet option. For some reason, if you can't use that, the Arma helm would be next best in slot, with Bless Dehyde being the third option and a lot cheaper, but I can't think of a great excuse why you wouldn't have your Slayer helmet. The best cape for range damage is the Ava's Assembler. It does provide a very solid range strength bonus, so in most cases, it's going to be your best option. If you're using a Twisted Bow, you have Divine Potions and generally very high range, like 99 preferably. That range bonus doesn't add an extra max hit, so the max cape or a range skill cape provides better options than the Assembler, mostly because of prayer. If you don't have a max cape or 99 range, or you're not using the T-Bow, then you can just make your way down from Assembler to Accumulator, and I assume most of you are not stuck with the Ava's Attractor. Best in slot for the neck is the Necklace of Anguish, which also is a nice range strength boost. Zenite Jewelry in general is one of the best upgrades that you can go for if you're wondering what expensive gear to invest in. Next you've got the Amulet of Fury, and then the Amulet of Glory being the lowest option on the totem pole. As for your ammo, it depends on your weapon, so we can move right on to that. The best weapon for the Hydra is the Twisted Bow, as it has a very high magic level, and the Twisted Bow does better against higher magic levels. Dragon Arrows are very worth it for the bonus damage since the Hydra boss has such a ridiculous drop table it'll make up for it easy. Amethyst Arrows are much cheaper and still pretty solid though to be fair. Your next best option for the weapon is the Blowpipe. Dragon Darts could be used because again the drop table helps make up for it, but if you're on a budget in any way, Addy Darts are a lot cheaper for how strong they are. I prefer their cost to damage over Rune Darts without a doubt. If you're willing to upgrade to Rune Darts, I would just go straight to Dragon Darts. The third best option at the moment is a Dragon Hunter Crossbow, but those are much more expensive than a Blowpipe. But after you go down the list of crossbows, Arma, Dragon, and Rune, though the Rune Crossbow with Ruby Enchanted Bolts would be a bit of a slow kill overall. So for the most part, Twisted Bow and Blowpipe are the two options people go for. If you are using a crossbow better than Rune, you definitely want to bring Ruby Dragon Bolts instead, and you could switch to Diamond Dragon Bolts if you get it to about 250 health. You can only use a shield if you're using a crossbow, but the best in slot range shield is a Twisted Buckler, followed by the Dragonfire Ward, even though that's very expensive, and the Odium Ward being third. 
Spear chest and legs armor is the best in slot option for range accuracy. The crystal body and crystal legs are very good options though if you have the crystal shards to work with. You need three crystal armor seeds to make a crystal body and two to make the legs, but they are tradable. Not very cheap to be fair. You also need 150 crystal shards for the top and another 100 to make the bottom. They are degradable, so you do need to keep charging them with crystal shards. If you're not doing any activities in Privy Nuts ever, then this isn't really going to be an option for you. They are slightly less accurate than armor, but it's a minuscule difference and they have a pretty solid prayer bonus. So once you get to the point where prayer is gonna be more important than range and defense, which basically if you're just taking no damage per kill because you're always getting the prayer right, then the crystal armor is actually really solid. Blessed Dragonhide is a cheaper option than both of these, and it's really not terrible for your backup option. In worst case scenario, you could go with Black Dragonhide. The Barrow's Gloves are best in slot for ranging, with Blessed Dehide again being the second best option, I'll admit. If you've made it to 95 Slayer, it may not be a bad time to get your Barrow's Gloves if you haven't. Again, the Black Dehyde, though, is worst case scenario, and they're really not terrible. If you've not completed the Elite Corin Diaries, then you do need to wear some special boots so that you don't take damage from the heat of the cave. Boots of Brimstone are the best option, the Boots of Stone being second, and finally, Granite Boots will protect you from the floor. If you have the Diary done, though, the Elite Diary, that is, Pagasian Boots are best in slot ranging, with Ranger Boots being second. The Ranger Boots are very similar price to Pagasian Boots, so you likely aren't stuck with those. Plus, Dehyde is far cheaper and only a little bit lower in range accuracy, and it has the one prayer bonus on it, which is pretty solid, so Pagasians are one of the last things that I would spring for gear-wise, especially as you get comfy with the boss and you want to lean towards prayer bonus. Devout Boots are only a little bit more expensive than Blessed Dehyde, and they have a four more prayer bonus. They have no ranging boost, which is slightly going to slow down your kill, but overall the Hydra has low enough defense that prayer boost is worth it in the long run. Again, if you're taking a lot of damage each kill, it helps if the kill is going to be a little bit faster for you, and overall trying to have longer trips with prayer is not going to be that important, but once you get to the point where it's all about prayer potions, you should be focused on prayer bonus. Finally, the best ring for range is the Archer's Ring, which I highly, highly suggest in viewing at the Nightmare Zone. Ring of the Gods is also a great option since it has a filthy prayer bonus, and again, you shouldn't view this ring. One of the first options that I would switch over to the prayer bonus is the Ring of the Gods if you have it, because this is a really, really solid prayer bonus, one of the best in the game. You could also go for the Imbued Ring of Suffering. It does have a plus four prayer bonus and is a little bit cheaper than the Ring of the Gods. We can go ahead and move on to the melee gear section. Again, for your helmet slot, you're going to want to wear a Slayer Helm, though technically it doesn't matter if it's imbued when you're using melee. I really imagine you've imbued it by 95 Slayer, though. The best cape for melee is the Infernal Cape. If you're bad like me, then your next best option is the Arty Cloak 4. The cloak is a very good stab and prayer bonus, which is helpful against the Hydra since you're going to be stabbing, and as we've talked about, prayer is very important. If you have an Arty Cloak 3 or lower, then the Fire Cape is going to be a better option than those ones, but if you don't have the Fire Cape, the lower level Arty Cloaks are still very helpful. The best in slot necklace option is the Amulet of Torture. Zenite Jewelry is generally one of your biggest boots that you can go for. The Fury is the second best option, and the Glory being the worst case scenario though, just like with your range gear. You don't need any ammo if you're not using range, so I would just go for a Blessing. The Rada's Blessing 4 is your best option since it gives you the plus 2 prayer bonus and unlimited teleports to the mountaintop. If you have at least Rada's Blessing 3, you do get those 3 tellers to the top of the mountain, but it's really not that helpful for doing a large task. Any other blessings are going to have the same effect, so it really doesn't matter which one you use. At the time of making this video, the cheapest blessing is the Peaceful Blessing. The best melee weapon, and arguably the only reasonable one to use, is the Dragon Hunter Lance. The Lance is like a Dragon Hunter crossbow, but in a stab weapon. The Hydra, like other dragons, is weak to stab, so the Lance can really crank on the Hydra. I assume other good stab weapons get the job done pretty well, but the Rapier is more expensive than a Lance, and generally tougher to get as an Iron Man. Though I guess as an Iron Man, you probably don't have the Lance if you haven't learned Hydra yet. And then you have a Zami Hasta with a good stab bonus, but at that point, you're much better off using a Blowpipe, which is cheaper. Blowpipe costs a little bit more money to use since you go through scales and darts, but it's going to make up for it more than that because of the Hydra's drop table. Getting the faster kills will make up for the money spent, no doubt. The best melee option here is the Avernic Defender. The Hydra does not have any Dragonfire attacks, so you do not need Dragonfire protection while you're here. If you can't afford the Avernic Defender, you should go for the Dragon instead. I am going to go out on a limb and say, if you've got at least 95 Slayer, and you plan on meleeing the Hydra, then you've probably got at least the Dragon Defender working with you. Best in slot for your chest and legs is going to be the Bandos set. The chest plate could be replaced with a fighter torso. It's basically a BCP, but without the defensive bonuses. The tassets could be replaced with something like obsidian, which has a whole plus one strength bonus, but that is going to be a minor difference, if any. Good prayer armor like proselyte doesn't hurt to use, but you do want to shell out for that bandos if you're getting close to upgrading. It's a pretty big deal. 
Best in slot melee gloves are the Ferocious Gloves, and it's by a pretty solid margin. Ferocious Gloves are very strong, but the Barrow's Gloves are not a bad secondary. I'll do it again, mentioning that by the time you get 95 Slayer, probably should have better gear, and if you haven't gotten your Barrow's Gloves yet, you could work your way down the recipe for Disaster Gloves until you get to Mithril, which are just as good as a combat bracelet. Again, for the boots, if you don't have the Elite Corin Diaries done, the top three options this time are a little bit different orders. Uh, granite boots happen to have a strength bonus, so granite boots are your best option for the special boots, and then boots of brimstone and boots of stone in that order. After that, Primordial Boots are best in slot for melee, giving a solid strength bonus, but again, Devout Boots are better in the long run when you get yourself to a point that you're really only using prayer when you fight the Hydra boss. The best ring for melee is the Imbued Berserker Ring, as I mentioned in the range section of the guide. Ring of the Gods is a great prayer bonus and can be imbued to double it up. It's a very expensive ring, but it's tied for the second highest prayer bonus on an item in the game currently, so it is worth it to spend the cash on it. The Ring of Suffering is not a bad backup option for prayer since it is cheaper than the Ring of the Gods, and it also has a good defense bonus if you make any mistakes. If you still have any questions about the gear section, either melee or range, then let me know in the comments section below. Remember you want to focus harder on doing damage early on, and as you get better and more consistent with your prayers, you want to lean more towards your prayer bonus. Your strength bonuses, be it range or melee, don't matter quite as much once you start doing lengthy trips and you're trying not to use a ton of prayer. Now we can go over the inventory setup, starting with range, though it is very similar to the melee setup to be fair. As you begin your Hydra grind, you'll find yourself taking more damage and needing more food, but the more comfortable you get with prayer, the less food or bruise you will need. Even on a day-to-day -day basis, I find the exact ratio of each thing can change, but first I'll go over the items that you're going to need to bring every time, and then we'll go over the ratio of potions. First, if you're using a T-Bow, or for some reason a crossbow, and you still own a BP, then the BP is your spec weapon. I have the terrible habit of not really using it much when I bring it, but it can help with mistakes and prolong your trips if you land a couple of blowpipe specs while you're in there. The Sanfu Serum is for the fact that you can get poisoned. It could be replaced with any other form of anti-poison, but the Sanfu also acts as a super restore, which is very helpful for prayer. The Rune Pouch has Alk runes in it since Hydra drops a ton of Alks. If you're thinking about bringing Bones to Peaches for occasional healing, and you can't use Bones to Peaches on Hydra Bones. Also, it would be pretty pricey to turn one set of Hydra Bones into Peaches. It's really not worth it. You're better off just focusing on your prayers. I use my Max Cape to teleport to the house, so if you're not maxed, you could just bring house tabs, but the Max Cape also adds the effect of the Holy Wrench, where you get more prayer from each potion, which is a nice bonus. I use the Rada's Blessing to teleport to the mountain. If you're using Fairy Rings and you don't have the Elite Lumbridge Diaries, you're going to need a Drom and Staff, and obviously if you don't have a Fairy Ring in your house, you would need a different teleport to get to another Fairy Ring too. I will discuss travel in a bit after the inventory section though. For the other items, we do have Bastion Potions here, which are not really as important if you're not taking as much damage since they just add defense, so a Ranging Potion works fine. And we have Bruise Restores and Food. The goal in the long run would be to bring basically no food or bruise, just a couple of emergencies, but early on you're probably going to need a little extra for when you make mistakes. Some players don't like to bring any bruise at all since they lower your stats and take multiple sips to get through compared to just eating food, but bruise also give a little extra healing per inventory which can provide you with more space for other restores. If you're able to make sure that you survive 5 minutes on that one divine potion dose, and then you only have to sip bruise between the divine uses, then you can survive off a couple of bruise pretty easily compared to like 5 or 6 food. That way the food is really more for emergencies or you may not need it at all once you feel comfortable enough. When you first start, I would go with something like one or two ranging potions, five or seven brews, four to six anglers, and then eight to ten restores, like you're looking at here. It should only take you an inventory or two to see what potion adjustments you need to make, though. Clearly, if you're running out of your food right away, and you have a ton of restores left, bring more food. Other way around, bring more restores. Other way around is good. You want to be able to bring more restores in the long run. As you get better at Hydra, you also may want to bring an extra Ranging Potion and maybe an extra Sanfu. Once your trips go long enough, you could get poisoned many times. Another thing I would like to mention is the Bracelet of Slaughter. Wearing this bracelet when the kill ends gives you a chance that it won't count towards your Slayer task, essentially extending your task allowing for more kills. I often forget to put it on, so I don't often bring it because I just won't use it when I'm there. Just more of a mental thing, I guess. But it can be worth using to grind out some Hydra KC in the long run. Moving on to the melee gear section, the basics here are very much the same. Your potion ratio is going to change as you get more comfortable fighting the boss, but there are a few things that you're going to have to bring every time no matter what. A Dragon Warhammer or a BGS is your best option for your spec weapon to lower the Hydra's defense a little bit. The SGS is not a terrible option, but really is only going to be a minor help, especially as you get good at the boss. 
I use my Max Cape for a teleport to my house, and it counts as a Holy Wrench too, which is very helpful for prayer. This can obviously just be replaced with a house tab. If you do have Rada's Blessing 4, and you have some very solid teleports overall, and don't feel like you need to bring the house tab with you, you could just replace this with a Holy Wrench too for some extra prayer. My rune pouch has Alks in it, only Alks, which is a pretty big deal since Hydra drops a ton of Alkables. The Sanfu Serum is because you can get poisoned by the Hydra, so you could just use a different anti-poison option, but the Sanfu also restores prayer, which is going to be very helpful for trip length. If you don't use the Rada's Blessing to travel there, don't forget to bring your method of travel, which we are going to discuss more in just a second. For your potions, you're going to want Divine Super Combats. You could use normal Super Combats, especially if you plan on brewing a bit. And then after that, you have Food, Brews, and Restores. The ratio of this is going to change over time. The better you get with your prayers, the less food you're going to need. Early in your KC, you're going to be taking more damage, though. You're going to have to eat a little bit more often. I would start with an Envy of two Super Combats, and then maybe half and half Food and Prayer, and then work your way towards taking less and less food. I'm not going as specific into amounts on this boss, because I do feel like it really does vary and only takes a trip or two to start noticing which resources you need more and less of. So take kind of this default setup and go in there and if you need more food then bring more food, if you need more prayer bring more prayer, that's just kind of how it works. Like I mentioned in the range section you can also bring a bracelet of slaughter to help extend the task. The Hydra boss is located in the Mount Karum Slayer Dungeon. Mount Karum is on the northwestern part of Zaya. The easiest way to teleport to the dungeon is the Rada's Blessing 4, or even the Blessing 3, but that only has 3 tallies per day. At least the Blessing 4 is unlimited. The next best option would be a Fairy Ring at the bottom of the mountain, which is code CIR. A Skills Necklace could get you to the Farming Guild, which isn't super far away, but if you're using any teleport outside of the Rada's Blessing, I suggest banking at the mountain and just running in and out, basically only having to teleport once when you're there, not teleporting between trips necessarily. Let's get into the mechanics a little bit. The Alchemical Hydra uses both range and magic attacks. The magic attack is this double blob looking projectile. While the range hit is just a single fang or a spike kind of. The Hydra alternates every three attacks, so it is very predictable. Other than the first hit of the fight, of course, her first attacks will be random, and after that she will alternate every three attacks. It's worthy to note now that in her final phase she'll alternate every attack, not every three, but we'll discuss that a little bit more soon. Keeping count of her attacks is very important, it's the most important thing really to taking no damage during the fight. It can be easy to lose track during a couple of her special attacks, but overall it's not that difficult to count them up and switch prayers every three hits. The Hydra fight consists of four different phases, always in the same order. In the first three phases, it'll have very high level defense, absorbing the majority of damage that you do to it. To remove this defense, you need to walk it over the correct vent, which will spray chemicals on it. During the first phase, she will be green, and you have to walk her over the red vent. Phase two, she's going to be blue, you walk her over the green vent, and in phase three, she'll be red, and you walk her over the blue vent. If you walk over the wrong color vent and it sprays chemicals on her, it's going to increase her max hit during the fight, making her a little more dangerous. This technically doesn't matter if you're good with your prayers, but if you mess up your prayers, this does make her overall obviously more dangerous. During the fourth phase, you don't need to lower her defense at all, but if you do walk her over that vent, it still raises her max hit. Each phase also has a special attack. These special attacks, similar to her regular attacks, are predictable. They're not used at a random time. When the phase starts, she's going to use three normal attacks, then a special attack. After that first special attack, she'll then use another nine normal attacks into another special attack. And the pattern will continue from there. Every nine normal attacks, she'll use a special attack. But honestly, if she uses two specs in one phase, you're having a very slow fight. The special attacks do not count towards a regular attack when you're counting to three. So if she uses two magic attacks, then a spec, she's going to use her third magic attack after the spec, then move on to range. In the first phase, when the Hydra is green, her special attack is to throw out some poison blobs near your feet. These can poison you, and they'll deal some poison damage not only on impact, but if you stand on them, they're going to continue to damage you. Avoiding the poison is really not that difficult. When you know it's coming, you just have to take really four or five steps away. Generally moving from east to west when you're taking your steps, you'll avoid the vast majority of poison blobs. 
In the blue phase, the special attack is a lightning attack. She will spawn four different lightning strikes around the room that will follow you for a few seconds. You could potentially just run around a bit to avoid them, but there is a different strategy. Overall, this is obviously easier to dodge while you're using range. That way you can keep attacking very easily while not taking hits from the lightning. If you are using range, you can either trek across the room while waiting them out or use this simple corner trick. The corner trick is a tick perfect thing, so the first few times you try it might be kind of annoying, but it's really not that difficult. Standing on this square in the northwest corner, the only lightning that can reach you will be spawned a little bit southeast of you, and instead of trying to run away from this lightning, what you can do is take two steps to basically trap it under you. As the lightning is going to land on this square, just diagonal from you, diagonal one square northeast, if you step onto that square at the same time the lightning does, then take a step north at the same time the lightning does, it'll get stuck on that square. So visually, here's what it looks like. Lightning's coming at you, you just click on the diagonal square, then the northern square, tick, tick, and you gotta make sure you're following the lightning with it, basically. Again, trying to be tick perfect with something can be annoying when you get it wrong, but this is pretty easy overall to get down and makes the lightning phase very skippable in general. When it comes to melee though, you can't really do this trick as well because you have to run up to the Hydra more often. So generally, being able to run across the room is gonna be a better option. This means for the melee phase, you might wanna stay a little bit further east before dragging her over to the last vent. And then when she uses her first lightning attack, that's when you can loop around, slowly drag her towards the vent and hopefully get her to the red phase before she uses another lightning attack. In the red phase, her special attack is a fire special attack. She's gonna walk to the middle of the room and then trap you in a smaller section of the room with a couple of walls of fire. Generally, you wanna stay in the corner of the room so she'll just section you off in the corner instead of diagonally on the side. Uh, if you're kind of in the middle of the room, you don't really get as many tricks to play with and you just have to outwalk the fire. If you're using range, it's really not that difficult to continue to attack her while the fire follows you. Similar to when dodging Vorkat's acid phase, you can attack her and continue to walk and the fire will never catch you. But if you stand still for just one tick, the fire will hit you not only for like 15 to 20 damage, but it'll burn you for another like 25 to 30 damage over time. There is a fire trick though, if you stay by the vents that you weaken the red phase on. Using these two squares on the southeastern side of the blue square, the blue vent here, you wanna stand on this first one waiting for her to attack you with the fire. If you click on the second square, right as she goes to attack you with the fire, as simply as that, the fire won't be able to chase you. Same as the lightning trick, you kind of have to be tick perfect and it can be a little weird at first, but it's really not that difficult. You just gotta stand on the corner of the blue vent here and then the moment that she targets you, just practice being able to click on this square and click back on her. This works for range and melee really well. And even though it's not needed to kill her, it's very worth learning overall. And if you're looking for more examples of not only this trick, but the lightning trick, I'll be showing them when I give more example kills in this guide and I'll be making a few videos that are hour-long example videos of fighting the Hydra where I'll show these tricks over and over again for more examples on how to do them. The final phase has the same special attack as the first phase, those little poison blobs, but it'll try to mess with you on the prayer switches at first. The Hydra's first attack in the final phase is always gonna be the opposite of the last attack that it used in the red phase. So forget the counting to three at all. If the last attack it used while it was red was a magic attack, it'll now use range. If it was a range attack, it'll now use magic. Also, during this phase, it's going to switch its attacks every attack instead of every three. It's still very predictable, but it's important to remember that going into this phase so you don't get KO'd late into the fight. It's easy to forget and just start counting to three and expecting her to use multiple attacks in a row, but once she's in the final phase, she's alternating every attack. During this last phase, one thing that will really mess you up early on is her fourth attack is gonna be a special attack, not a normal attack, just like any other phase, but that doesn't count towards her alternating attacks, just like any other phase too. So it seems simple to remember that when she uses a special attack, you don't have to switch prayers, but when you start to get into the habit of switching prayers every attack, it's easy to switch prayers during the poison attack, which is not what you're supposed to do. Next, I'm going into what a typical trip and an actual kill will look like, but I also plan on, again, making those videos with more examples like I have with other bossing guides, and I'll be linking those videos in the description below. But if you have any specific questions about the mechanics, do let me know in the comments section below. Let's take a look at a typical trip. I'm gonna be using a Rada's Blessing to teleport to get up to the mountain. I do have the shortcut unlocked, but I'll be showing the path for anybody who doesn't here. 
shortcut does take the same amount of time as the path. It's not really intended to be a shortcut necessarily. It's more just convenient that you don't have to defend against the regular hydras while you run over there. Here's where the shortcut would take you though. Like I've been doing, I'll show a range kill and then I'll show a melee kill after this. For the quick prayers, you do want to pick the overhead that you have the lowest defense against. If you're wearing range gear, it's going to be very close, but it tends to lean that range is your lowest defense, so you want to start with protect from range. If you're using melee, it's definitely going to be protect from magic that you want to use. As your offensive prayer, obviously rigor or eagle eye if you don't have it for range, and for melee, piety is going to be your best option. Usually you want to start the fight in the red corner since that's the first pool that you got to lead the hydra over to, but when you enter the room, you're on the other side of the room, so for your first kill, you got to run over there while it's already spawned, which is not a huge deal. Turn on your quick prayers and run in. If you're using range, you can attack a couple times while running to the red side, but it doesn't really matter that much since your damage is reduced a ton until she gets on that vent. Her first attack is the only time where you don't know at all what kind of attack she's going to use, range or magic, so you're going to have to tank it. Obviously, if the Hydra uses an attack that you're not protecting from, you got to switch those overheads. After three attacks, she is going to use her poison special attack, which you only need to take a few steps from right as she uses it generally east to west does the best job. And then also make sure you're switching her overheads. Now that she has used three, whether it be range or magic attacks, she is going to switch over. Once you get her to 3 fourths health, it will turn blue. The range and magic attacks do not reset when it changes phases. If you end it on two magic attacks, the blue one's going to use one more magic attack and then switch over to range, and then vice versa. Maybe you end it on one range attack being used, the blue one's going to use two more range attacks before switching over to magic. No matter which attacks the blue one is using, after three of them, it will use its lightning special attack. Generally with range, you hopefully have led it already to the northwestern part of the room and near the green vent, and now you could use the corner trick. If you don't trust yourself with the corner trick, you could just run it out, but it is, again, highly suggested to learn the corner trick for the lightning. Even if you blow it, you don't really take that much damage with the lightning, so it's not that big of a deal to practice it, mess it up a few times, and eventually get it down. As with any other phase, nine attacks after the special attack, it'll use another special, but if you have decent gear and weapons, good levels, you're likely not to see multiple specs per phase. Once it reaches half health, it'll now turn red. You gotta get over to that final vent, which hopefully you're standing near already. After three attacks, it will use the fire spec. As you see the Hydra moving towards the center of the room, it's best to head over to this square towards the southeastern corner of the blue vent. If you don't plan on using the fire trick, then overall you could just walk it out and it doesn't hurt to just head to the southwestern part of the room where there's no vent. But again, just like the lightning trick and like I've said about the fire trick already, you do want to learn it and get it down. It doesn't hurt in the long run. As you're getting it close to one quarter health, it is important to remember what attack did the Hydra use last here because when it goes into the last phase, it'll use the opposite attack. So at a quarter health, it'll turn black and start the final phase. If it used a magic attack last, it'll be a range attack first. And if it used a range attack last, it'll be a magic attack first. And now it's alternating every attack. The fourth attack of the phase is going to be a poison attack. Again, that will not make you switch your overheads and often will get you killed if you're anything like me. This poison attack for some reason messed me up. I would always switch my overheads and then tank the next hit. Just like any other phase, after the special attack, she will use nine regular attacks in a row. Though in this case, she is alternating range from magic. And after nine attacks, she would use the poison attack again. But if you have decent stats and gear, you probably won't see that point, And you'll be done with the fight before you ever get another poison attack. When the kill is over, you pick up any of your loots, possibly alk anything you need. And generally, you'll leave the hydra bones on the ground until the end of the trip. Uh, for the next kill, you want to go hover in the, the red corner, the southeastern corner of the room, and just start the kill over again like normal. At the end of the trip, if you have any free envy space, you can pick up those Hydra Bones for a little extra pop profit, excuse me, but often you won't really be able to pick up many of those Hydra Bones. Let's take a look at a trip for the melee side of things. Again, I generally use the Rada's Blessing Teleport to get up to the mountain. Uh, whatever your teleport options are, if it's not that convenient, then I just suggest using the bank on the top of the mountain and running in and out of the layer between trips. For the quick prayers here, I would go with Protect from Magic and Piety. Running in, you don't really want to bother attacking her on the way to the red corner. Just make your way all the way to the corner, trying to get her over that vent as soon as possible. Once she hits the red vent, I suggest using a Dragon Warhammer or a BGS spec on her to try to lower that defense. 
and then try to stay on the eastern side of the vents to help yourself when the poison attack comes. Usually that's not going to be that long after you use your spec because you already had to run in. If it was the first kill of the trip, maybe you get a couple of attacks in, but once she uses that poison attack, just run a couple of squares west and be on the southern side of the vent, and 99% of the time the poison won't attack you. It, it, she usually sends it further east, and if you're running west through it, you're good to go. Once she turns blue, you gotta make the trek north, try to get her over that green vent, and three attacks in, be ready for the lightning attack. With melee, you don't really want to use the corner trick. It doesn't really matter if you're stuck in the corner and you can't attack her, that doesn't help at all. So try to hover a little bit on the eastern side of the room when she uses the lightning, and then kind of lap around the blue vent, giving yourself a... Uh, a little bit of no damage time, I guess, less DPS being used, but that's one of the benefits of range is that you get to attack during this phase. Once you take a small loop around the vent though, the lightning should be done and you can keep attacking her. If you do get another lightning phase at this point, then you're just gonna need to outrun it and be a little uh, lighter on your feet, but generally, as I've said a few times now, if you have good gear and stats, you won't see multiple specs in a single phase. Once you get her to half health, she'll turn red, and you probably have her over that blue vent already, which means her defense will get lowered pretty quickly. Three attacks in, just like with the range phase, you should go for the corner trick, and in fact, with melee, it's far more important that you head over to this square for the corner trick. Again, if you're not seeing enough examples of these tricks, both the lightning and the fire trick during this video, I am going to be putting out more examples for the overall Hydra kill with some Hour of Hydra videos coming out after this guide and when they are out they will be linked in the description. As she's approaching a quarter health, remember to pay attention to what attack she used last because once she turns to phase 4, she's using the opposite of that attack. If you last saw a magic attack, phase 4 starts with range. If you last saw a range attack, phase 4 is starting with magic. That's just how it works. Phase 4 begins, she'll now be alternating her attacks, magic to range to magic to range to magic to range, but on the fourth attack, remember, it's her special attack, she will be using the poison blob similar to the green phase, and this doesn't count for the alternating, so if her third attack is range, and her fourth attack is poison, her fifth attack will still be magic, it won't have switched back to range at that point. Now you're on the final stretch, you just gotta keep alternating your prayers, remember nine attacks after her spec, she could use another, but hopefully you do enough damage that you don't have to see that second spec. Similar to the range life, pick up any loot you need, go ahead and alk anything you need, and head to the red corner of the room. At the end of the trip, you can pick up any Hydra Bones that you may have space for, for a little extra profit, but for the most part, a lot of those Hydra Bones are going to disappear. If you have any questions about the Hydra mechanics, how to fight the Hydra in any way, at any point during the trip, any tips on really just the mechanics and the typical trip together, let me know in the comments section below. I believe that's all the info I wanna give on how to fight the Hydra specifically. And again, I'll be having those videos with way more examples in them in the description. But if you have any specific questions that I haven't answered, you just gotta ask me in the comments section and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Now that we are done with how to kill the Hydra though, we can get into really the best part of the Hydra, the loot. The Hydra has one of the most broken loot tables in the entire game, though it does require 95 Slayer, and you can only get the task from the highest tier Slayer Master, so I guess it is reasonable that you would want to be rewarded very nicely for actually getting some kills. Currently, according to the OSRS Wiki, the average GP that you get from each Hydra kill is about 118k. That would be not including the uniques, is the crazy part. That's just the normal drops. If you add the uniques, you're on pace for more like 215k an hour, as long as you're getting every unique on the drop rate. Obviously, you could get lucky or could get unlucky. These numbers are subject to change, and I have left the link to the Hydra's page with these updating numbers. If you're watching this months down the road and you want to see some new numbers, that link is in the description. Your kills per hour will vary a lot depending on your levels, your gear, and obviously how good you are at the boss, which mostly affects how often you have to bank. With max gear and stats, you can expect about 25 kills an hour. For those with bare minimum requirements, you can see 20 or even less an hour, especially if you're having to take a lot of bank trips. 15 to 25 kills per hour would be anywhere from 3.2 mil in loot per hour to 5.3 mil in loot. This isn't all profit, to be fair. You're going to be draining a lot of potions, and if you're using a blowpipe, then you're spending a lot of money in scales, too. This does include uniques, so hitting those numbers is Pretty uncommon in general, you're going to range a lot from uh, a lot of hours that are 1.7 mil or so to 2.9 mil an hour, and then eventually have big hours where you get like a Hydra Claw and make a ton of money. How this boils down, I normally expect anywhere from 3 to 3.5 mil profit an hour while I'm doing a Slayer task, but clearly it ranges anywhere from 2 to 5 mil depending on things like your gear, your stats, how good you are at the boss, and even your luck. If you're getting closer to 2 mil an hour consistently, and you'd like to be making more like 5 mil an hour, your stats and gear are likely the first place you need to look. You need better stats, you need better gear, and then 
from there, probably get better at the boss, but uh, stats and gear are definitely number one priority for faster kills. The Hydra's unique drops are pretty solid overall, but keep in mind, only the first of the two drops that you get each kill can be a unique, so you can't get two big items in one kill. The most sought out item being the Hydra's Claw can be used to make a Dragon Hunter Lance. It is a one in a thousand drop and currently worth about 76 mil and kind of on its way down, but overall is been an expensive item since the day it came out and will stay expensive for quite a long time. The Hydra Leather can be used to make ferocious gloves, and this is a 1 in 512, currently worth 6 to 6.5 six mil. The Hydra also drops the Hydra's tail, the brimstone ring pieces, and some dragon ranged weapons including knives and thrown axes. These aren't technically unique since the regular Hydras can drop them too, but you do have a higher chance of getting these drops from a boss kill rather than the regular ones. You can get the Hydra Heads Drop at a 1 in 256 drop rate. They're generally used to recolor your Slayer Helm or hang up in your house, but you could also use them on the Dark Altar for a little bit of prayer XP. The Hydra also has a pet and a jar drop. The Jar of Chemicals is 1 in 2000 drop and is very, very cheap, so it's not really something you want to see unless you're going for collection log. The pet is 1 in 3000, just like most Slayer pets, and I gotta say, it's one of the coolest pets in the game. You can change it to look like any of the four phases during the Hydra fight, and overall, I'm, uh... I'm definitely a little biased on pets that you get multiple options on how they look, so the Hydra pet is a pretty cool one. I believe that is everything I wanted to say about fighting the Hydra, everyone. If you have any questions about the Hydra fight, be sure to let me know in the comments section below so I can get back to you as soon as possible. If you enjoyed the video or you just got some useful information, be sure to drop a like and subscribe for more content. If you've been enjoying the content in general, I do stream on Twitch, same link as YouTube. The link should be on the screen and in the description too. Hope to see you on the Twitch side of things soon. Again, thank you very much for watching this video, everybody. Hope you enjoyed or got some useful information and best of luck on your Hydra grind.